we'll move on to the next um, jump up in our 2D system. The first one we did P1, and that brought us a triclinic lattice. So it makes sense to go to P2, and that's going to bring us to the monoclinic lattice. So that we say at the top here, but we're also going to see later that uh, M and CM are also compatible uh, with this. So let's start with our P2. And recall with our uh, P2 system that we have our two-fold axis added to lattice, but with our combo theorem that added in between any two-fold axis, you get another two-fold axis, which means there's also one in the middle. Now our choices for T3 to be consistent with this are that um, I could go straight up because that would put this two-fold axis above a two-fold axis. So that's one possibility. I could actually go up and end up above this one right which is um, going up this side if you will if I imagine some other side here and I end up exactly above here or I could go up and uh, come up and sit right above uh, this middle element here so those are my three choices I could go over here but that would be um, the same as this one so those are three possibilities for T3, and now you can see how the higher symmetries limit your uh, ability to choose how many uh, structures we get here. And so um, uh, let's look at each one of those. Well, like I said, the first one uh, is pretty simple, and that's where we would say T3 uh, would equal uh, Z, just some random amount in the z direction it doesn't matter what it is right now but it's just in the z direction which we if we label you know i j k as the cartesian you know system then this is just z k right uh, and without writing these then uh um you know we just say t3 is z right so it's just some normal direction here of z and we're going to call that monolithic primitive and that'll be true for um, all these cases that basically you can always move directly up and that's always going to be the primitive uh, case now let's look at this one that goes up sideways right so in that case uh, you know t3 is going to equal a one half zero z in the coordinate system and uh, um, or I should say really I guess because I'm looking on that panel that's uh, the y direction so I should say 0 1 half z it doesn't matter they are the same uh, so in that case uh, you would be placing this next level up so if I imagine this bottom level Right. What it's doing is sliding this entire level up. So what we've just done is created this layer that sits above. I mean, it's not the clearest picture in the world, but you get what I'm saying. It's the same layer, just shift it up and it works because this corner is sitting right above this two-fold axis that's sitting on this side so it's compatible and all the other ones line up as well now that is fine but what we do conventionally is say aha well uh, if I 
had continued and done just another one, I would have ended up above this corner in this case. And of course, that would just be sitting on the next level up. But uh, what I could do is uh, shift this back by T2 uh, to be a point up here. So this is essentially creating a double lattice because you see if I go up here, this is one point. I go ahead, I create another point. I go ahead up here, create another point. And if I look at what I've just done over here, I've made it a rectangular shape on this sidewall, right? But it's essentially a double cell because this, this one here I've drawn here is sort of the cell that would have formed, you know, sort of, you know, off of this guy right here. And so this ends up being sort of a twice, you know, that cell so you can have a double cell. So if I were to redraw that now, I forced a double cell situation and all faces Well, actually, not all faces. But... So, uh, those faces where I've made this translation uh, are uh, with this double cell. I'll have a lattice point um, on those faces in that direction. That's called a side centered cell. And um, we're going to call that, of course, the, the monolithic side center cell. We can have T3 come out and sit above this guy. However, I can continue on. Like I did before and have a double cell defined as twice that diagonal, you know, through the center here, right? And that'll be above this guy. So I'll be looking at a cell that looks like the following. because I went up to here. And of course I can translate back to this one, right? So essentially two translations, one back. And um, again, I'm just, instead of drawing the cell out this way, actually what I'm doing is going backwards and looking at what's above it just by these translations and defining a cubic, uh, sorry, not a cubic, a um, right angle situation here. Uh, and then this is a bodied centered. Now it turns out that um, in this monolithic case, uh, what you have to recognize if I look at this base and I look at this bodied centered guy, and let's look at it in projection. So I'm looking down on this. The body center one would have this guy at one half up, right? So this would be sitting uh, one half up above that, right? So that's the body center I just showed you here, but instead of uh, showing this thing actually in three dimensions, I'm just going to draw it right there. Now I can say, uh, okay. Let's go back and think about the side-centered cell. Well, if I redefine this in the following way, And 
this of course is related by translation, so that would be there too, one half z up, then if I take these two bodied centered cells and I just change the base and look at it as this parallelogram instead of this parallelogram, all of a sudden I have on the sides uh, these two uh, um, guys halfway up. So in other words, looking back in this diagram, if I were to define this as one side of the cell instead, If I can draw this, which is why I didn't do it this way, but let's see, am I good enough to draw it that way? Something like that. Then you can see here the body centered atom in the next one would be here, and all of a sudden I have a side centered lattice. So with a shift in the definition of the base and the lattice points in the same positions, I end up with the same. So I only end up with two unique, uh, two lattices, um, let's call them monolithic primitive and bodied center, and we're going to use I for bodied center because it's the Schoen's fleece notation, which we've been avoiding. But in the international notation, we use that for the uh, bodied centered. So let's summarize uh, where we are with the monoclinic uh, so far. Uh, in general, then the the monoclinic cell. Well, that's not very good. Let's draw it like this to emphasize that this angle can be anything. However, this angle and this angle are 90 degrees. <clears throat> and we were forced into that because either when I try to stay above the twofold axis here, uh, it creates a situation, if, you know, if I, if I move up and do a double thing, then I come straight up in the cell and I end up with a bodied center. Or if in the simple case, I go straight up to begin with, right, in order to stay above this twofold axis, I end up with uh, uh, right angles there. And so to be consistent, you know, once I do that, uh, this other side is that way as well. So basically, um, monoclinic, you have, you have the following. So uh, hopefully you can see that in this uh, picture over here. Now, um, there's a unique situation here where now we can think about adding. Uh, so the way we got here, remember, is that we started with P2. And what I want to show you now is that if you start with M or CM, you'll end up with the same uh, situation, except that if you think about M or 2M, let me draw something that has uh, mirror planes. And if we take, uh, you know, our P2, for example, well, let's just take, you know, something with uh, mirror planes. So I have PM, right? And uh, if you look at PM, it means that now, ignoring anything else that's in there, right? We're just looking at mirror plane only. We're not looking at two-fold X or anything. But even with uh, PM, what it means for T3 is that, you know, if T3 is starting in this corner and I'm showing coming up, it has to be anywhere along this edge. It's got to stop, right, if you think about it. Because... Um, if I were to come up and stop out here, somehow this has to have a mirror plane, right? Because I'm translating mirror plane to here, right? So I have to be able to translate along here and stop here. Or, you know, alternatively, I can stop uh, anywhere 
out here, of course, right? So basically, anywhere along here, anywhere along here, you know, projected upwards, I can stop T3 and that would be consistent uh, with PM. It turns out that, of course, if I look at, you know, uh, something like PG, so this is, yeah. So if I have glide plane here, glide plane here, glide plane here, this is PG, and the same criterion, right? If I were to come up here, I have to stop anywhere along here so that, you know, the glide plane's coming up and I can stop on unaware here. And I, of course, I just stopped in the same glide plane, so I'm not violating anything. But remember, if I come out here and I stop here, I'd have to have a glide plane here because this translation vector means that this glide plane would have to transition here. And there isn't one there, so that doesn't work. But same thing here as in the mirror plane. As If I were to, sorry, if I were to stop anywhere along here, that would work um, as well. Right now, if I'm dealing with mirror planes, right, then it means that I have to deal with something like this back plane that I'm showing here. So, for example, you know, um, the um, this plane that's coming out could be a, be a mirror plane, for example, right? Uh, you know, in other words, so if I look projected down. I would do, uh, if I wanted to simulate what I have over here, I would look down, I would make this back a plane, right? Coming out of it, which is this one, I would have this mirror plane here, right? Oops, sorry about that. And so, of course, I could have PM if I had those planes coming along this direction, right? And, um, if I did that, then of course, uh, nothing really changes actually, because it means that if I have a vector here, the mirror plane uh, argument just says I have to stop uh, somewhere on there. But of course, the other criterion is a two-fold axis, uh, which means that this is basically compatible and doesn't change anything with respect to monolithic cases. So for example, um, if I consider this to be uh, the mirror plane coming straight up, and and um, this were the base of the cell. Right, so this would be, let's say, T1, and this was T2. Then, if T3 comes straight up from this corner, right, then uh, I haven't changed anything and I have, so that's compatible with uh, PM, with a PMPG. The other option that I, that I show here is this middle uh, mirror plane, in which case, you know, that one would be kind of coming out here. And so we're saying in that case, is that, oops, is that uh, instead of coming straight up like the case we did here to get the, the primitive, this thing would have to end in the middle. And because of the twofold axes that we might have, you can imagine this stopping here. And that would be the same. Uh, as before, the body-centered uh, situation and redefining a lattice that way. So that one would produce... So basically, without having to talk about the CM case, uh, M, P, G, and CM uh, don't lead to anything new. And I've used up all my pixels, but fortunately, that is uh, the end of this lecture.